I was scrolling on TikTok last year and I came across a lady who said this quote and you know what? Now she said it, I couldn't agree more. Her quote was, traditions are just rules made by the dead. Hello and welcome to this week's episode. So today we're looking at being true to you and this is kind of phase number three in how I help my couples create the day of their dreams. It's also looking at how I structure things for my business. So it's being true to me, being true to my true authentic self and what it is that I want to do. And I give that advice to my brides and grooms too. It's how to focus our energy on the things that we really want and how to kind of block out any kind of other people's expectations of us and what it is that we want to create for our big day. So today is kind of almost like an offshoot from last week's episode, which was about decision making. Last week, I asked you to, I keep doing this, peace sign. I can give you two big questions. And those questions have actually had people um, stir some things up inside them because it's not things that they actually ask themselves. They feel a bit conflicted asking these questions and I can see why. Now, the questions were, I've got to read them because I can't remember off the top of my head. So the questions were, how much information are you willing to tell people about your wedding or your wedding planning process? And how many people are you wanting to be involved in the wedding planning process? And as I said last week, people can be involved without knowing everything that you're doing. And the reason this has caused a bit of a stir is because we're asking the question and we probably didn't realize we had a choice before and you're probably thinking well obviously we have a choice we only have the choice if we ask ourselves those questions and because we've asked them we're now uh, facing a little conflict in us we might be triggered it might be trigger triggering other people around us like of course we've got to have everybody involved they need to know everything do they so today we are looking at empowering you as a couple to create the day of your dreams and it's not letting people's expectations of you and your day phase you or have anything that they say or do um, disrupt your flow. So there's a few things, a few tips again, because I'm all about giving tips and I want you to really think about them. Now, when I talk about being true to you and setting your own traditions, if you are somebody who is having a very traditional or a uh, religious wedding, I am not in any way disrespecting your cultures, your traditions at all. And you may be feeling like, well, I have to do these because it is part of who I am, part of my culture, part of how I grow up. Obviously, do those. These suggestions that I have here are for the modern couple that want to break away from the stereotypical traditional wedding. So please bear that in mind. So today I want to encourage you how to set your own traditions. Then that might sound scary because you're like, well, we've had all these traditions for like years and years and years. How can I set my own? Easy. I want you to stand out from the norm. So I had a family member say a good few years ago that when you've been to one wedding, you've been to them all. And that makes you think, well, does that mean every wedding's the same? It can feel that way. It can. So let's try and be a little bit more unique in our wedding days, making it and creating it that it's for us. And that's what makes it different and step, uh, set out from the rest. Setting boundaries early. We spoke about that last week, but I'm going to go through it again because it's very important. 
and being true to you and your vision. Now, I was scrolling on TikTok last year, and I think it was last year, the beginning of this year, who knows? Um, And I came across a lady who said this quote, and you know what? Now she said it, I couldn't agree more. Her quote was, traditions are just rules made by the dead. Mm. Now that stirs something up because you're like, no, traditions are part of of our culture and, and who we are. So I want you to really think about weddings in the traditional sense over here. I'm going to state like over here in the UK and see it from a point of view that's kind of like, as I said, I'm not disrespecting disrespecting religious weddings or any cultures or any traditions in that sense I'm speaking about how I see traditional weddings so the big white gowns you know bridesmaids wedding cakes honeymoons that kind of thing now if that's you disagree with that statement I want you to really encourage you to look into the history of weddings because if you look into the history of weddings I guarantee you you would not want to get married you'd be like what's the point it is so dark it is so like horrendously toxic it's such an archaic way of being and part of us will go well why the hell are we getting married in this day and age it's obviously a declaration of love and it's to show that we're committed that we love our partners but in the same instance these days it's so easy to get divorced too where that wasn't an option back then so look into the history of these traditions that you want to put in place for your big day and see if it sits well with you and your values because if it doesn't scrap it and create new ones now the way I see this is I've got a daughter and if she was to ever get married I would ask her why why do you want that why do you want to uh, have a garter toss why do you want (laughs) <laughs> to throw a bouquet why do you want xyz oh because everyone does it mom look into the history and the traditions and see if it sits well because if it doesn't do not do them and create your own and you can do this you can create your own it might start people talking on your day like oh, they've not done this they've not done that do they though are they though Really think about that. Are they really going to worry that you've not done a bouquet toss? Are they really going to worry that you've not done a first dance? It's your wedding. So when you are looking into the traditions of things for your wedding, and if it feels and fits with you, and it fits in with your vision, if it doesn't, scrap it, create a new one, or adjust it so it's for you and who you are like bring out your personality and I think that's why weddings are really really good in that way because we can showcase who we are on this big day whether it's from themes whether it's from activities whether it's from oh gosh um what you wear like everything is a statement so when it comes to traditions I want you to really think about are they for us? Do we really want that? Push the boundaries of weddings. Is this pressure going to serve me or not? <laughs> right? So Jacob and I, when we get married, it is going to be so far from what a normal traditional wedding would be. So unfortunately, as you know, my dad passed away last year. So I don't have my dad there as many of us may or may not we don't have any of Jacob's family there zero um he cut ties with them several years ago and it was the best decision he said he's ever made so we don't have a groom side of the family 
Okay. Now that's going to cause a bit of a, a rumblings between friends and family. Like, who is this guy? Why is he just on his own? Obviously, you don't need to tell them your whole history, your own whole life story. But we don't have that. So when it comes to seating in a traditional sense for your wedding, our seating plan is going to be completely different. And I know there's so many couples out there that are going to be the same. Life is fruitful. We've lived a life. This might be your second marriage. This might be just something that you've done later in life. And so your wedding is going to be completely different from the stereotypical one we see on TV and film. And that is okay. So you can question things like, do I want a bridal party or groomsman? Like, do I want that? Do we need that? Tradition says yes. But the modern day, you don't have to. So I gave my bridesmaids a choice because I know how expensive weddings are. I know how time consuming they are. I know how us as brides especially get so consumed by wedding planning that it's everything for us. It's the story we dream of. It's everything we speak about and it can go on for years and years and years, right? So we'll have that honeymoon period where everyone's asking us everything at the beginning and we're keen to tell them. And then it becomes like yeah okay all she goes on about is the wedding like and you will feel that way let's be open and honest here it can be lonely right it can be lonely and so you're going on this roller coaster as a bride like no one cares why is no one's no one cares what I'm doing no one's asking me but all you want to do is tell them that's why I say journal about it because it will be lonely so I gave my brides, uh, sorry, my brides, <laughs> they're not, not yet, they probably won't be, um, but I gave my bridesmaids um, a little booklet and in it was kind of like inspiration for our big day and it explains how much like I love them and I wanted them there. However, I was like, I know it's expensive and I did this from the off, by the way. So in this little, I haven't got one here. I'll, I'll pop it up somewhere. So in it, I basically said, like, this is a choice. I'd love you to be by my side on my big day. However, you know, costs of things. I'm not expecting you to come to every appointment, right? I know that this is going to be expensive, but I can only either afford to buy your dress or your hair and makeup. I've been honest up front. So you can choose which you want to go down. Um, I also said something in there like, if you say no, there's no hard feelings. Okay. We're still best pals. Like I love you to death. This is a decision you've got to make. And I speak to quite a few brides who get quite stuck because obviously this is exciting for you and it's your big day but without being harsh the world doesn't revolve around you and so yes you've got the excitement of asking your bridesmaids and planning these events but in reality I think you know we've gone a bit far in expecting people to be at every single thing now you probably think yeah but I would do it for them this is where we fall fall fat on our faces because as soon as we expect someone to behave the way we would you run into conflict because it will never happen never happen so be mindful of that I mean be mindful that if you're giving people a choice, you're being upfront with what it is that either you can afford, that you want them there. Give them a choice on if they want to be a bridesmaid, groomsman, you know, uh, a part of your bridal party. 
give them our choice. I think the way that we approach this and have done for quite some time now, it's quite toxic. And I have been in many Facebook groups where this is a hot topic of just discussion. And it's a lot of brides being disappointed by their bridal party. They're not pulling their finger out. They're not attending all the appointments. Like, it is hard to watch these comments. And I get it. I do. I really get it. But I think that's where we need to rein it in. And you know what? Do everything as a surprise. If you want someone there choosing your dress with you choose a few people you don't need everybody there you know it's like going on a million hen do's like if you've got somebody who's planning the hen do and it's not going to plan really assess and you will know this from the beginning before you've asked anyone you will know who to trust and who not to trust and if you don't you have to evaluate whether or not they're going to be in your bridal party don't just ask people for the hell of it it's all about listening and you will know you will think about whether or not having groomsmen and bridesmaids are an option because you can do this and not have them people do it all the time we're just stuck in being conditioned to think we have to have that you know what you can have your best friends there still you can have photographs with your best friends there without being bridesmaids without being maids of honor literally look into traditions and see see if they sit well with you and your values if they don't let's let's rewrite the rule book let's do it another one is staggered hindus now as i said jacob and, Bar, uh, jacob and i our wedding is going to be different and if we're honest like I've got a small friendship group Jacob's got a tiny one you know you don't have to go and have the big traditional let's go to Liverpool Manchester London and have a stag weekend like the last hurrah like you don't need to do that if that is not what you do normally don't do it don't do it And your friends and your family should know that that's not something that you want. Do something that you do want. If you want to go away for a hiking weekend, you want to go to a spa for a weekend, you know, you do actually want to go and say you want to go to Holland or you want to go to Iceland just to experience something with your friends. Like, it doesn't have to be a heavy drinking session. Like, we're so cultured to that here in the UK it's kind of funny like the whole hen is really really funny when you think about hen parties and you see them out and about you know you've got my sister was walking around I've got a picture of it somewhere (laughs) with a big blow-up penis just walking casually around Liverpool we've got penis straws you know why 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 do we have that why did what was that thing like i don't know again probably look into that it's probably some historical thing towards men you know let's worship them that's probably what that is but we don't know it we're just walking around not listening so do we need that do you want that if you don't don't do it you know, my sister, she didn't have, a, you know, the traditional stripper. I won't be either. It would just be with my close loved ones that I have this. So really think about it. Again, like walking down the aisle. Yes, I will be going down. It's something that I've got to think about. Do I want or do you want anyone to walk you down the aisle? I saw another lady on TikTok who said, her dad is very much alive and well, but she didn't like what the whole walking down the aisle with a father meant, right? She didn't like that, so she didn't do it. In fact, her dad was like, yeah, that's fine. 
that's absolutely fine. He was there in there with her in the morning, helped to get ready, beautiful photographs, and she walked down the aisle herself. And what that meant for her was much more than her dad giving her away. You know, the old traditions of giving her away. So for me, I've got to really think about what do I want? Do I want to walk down myself? Will I ask my brother? Will um, I ask my mom? Like, think about it. Look into the traditions and think about it. A few more things that you can really look at and see if they sit well with you and if you want to change them, if you want new traditions. I've got a few ideas here for you. So your wedding cake. Again, traditionally, it'd be a tiered cake, fruit cake. You'd keep the top tier for your first child. I mean, that doesn't happen anymore, very rarely. Do you even want a wedding cake? If cake doesn't sit well, do you want a champagne tower? My sister had donut from last week. Is it an asset or is it a luxury? Really look at that as well and decide on, are we going to get anything from these traditions other than like going like sheep and doing them? Or can we do our own and start start something else? Another one's first dance. Do you want a first dance with your dad, with your mom, with your other half? Do you want a traditional slow, slow dance song? Or do you want to do some choreography? Do you want to get everyone up? Literally think about the first dance, dance song and what that means to you too and how you can involve that in setting a tradition another one signing the register so i saw this really great almost like game and i don't want it to make weddings come off like oh it's a big game but to get people involved and have something a little different so one was signing the register so whilst you're signing your register you usually have two people will come up and sign them with you so on my sisters it was my brother and um Dwayne my brother-in-law's brother they went up and signed the register as witnesses now <laughs> someone <laughs> on their big day had got everybody's name in a hat that was going to be there and it was at the side no one knew this was happening so whilst the bride and groom went over to sign the register they had no witnesses and they were like well who's going to sign the register and they picked two random names out of a hat so your your guests are like oh my god one of us would be a witness it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you want to choose two important people or if you want to get everybody involved and it makes that a little bit special another one was at your ceremony everybody singing a song so in traditional like say catholic um weddings you'd have hymns this <laughs> wedding um just had a song like a pop song that everyone started singing and it just broke up the the ceremony a bit livened everything up a bit refreshed it and it was just like the bride and group that was them like they loved to sing and they wanted everybody to be involved obviously if you're going to do that make sure you've got a sheet with the lyrics on and people kind of know the song you know <laughs> otherwise it's just going to be a babbling mess another one's receiving line if you don't know what that is <laughs> It was, uh, my cousin had this actually, Ryan and Ryan did, but his, his wife, Laura. It's where everybody from your um, uh, like party, your bridal party, whatever, are all standing in line. And as people are walking in to have their food, usually you would shake their hand, you'll welcome them, you would go in. Now it's quite a long process. I think Ryan was there for like half an hour shaking hands with people. So instead of doing that, and welcoming everybody like that another fun thing is when you're having your dinner so you're welcoming with a song and then before you sit down what you can do is come in and your photographer's following or videographer's following and 
go around to every table, have a fun picture with them and do that to every table. So it's like you're seeing everybody, you're getting a picture with everybody. And it's not taking a lot of time out either, like you're not interrupting speeches or anything. You're actually coming into the room and doing this. You could do a kind of table to table little journey before you get to your own table. And again, you've got some really cool pictures that not everybody will have. So that's also another thing to really be mindful of. Invitations. Again, we're in a modern world. People want sustainable weddings. We all have to be mindful of the environment and what we do. So do you actually want a physical invitation? I mean, it's nice, obviously, but do you want one? Are people going to keep that forever? Or is it going to go in the bin? I am swaying towards digital. And that's just because I do a lot of my work online anyway. And I'll be creating a wedding website online. I'll be doing all my save the dates online. I get, I've got everybody I need are in my phone. And so text them. It sounds like really impersonal. Like, oh my gosh. Is it? I'm inviting you to a private like wedding website where you can RSVP. You can look at, actually, you get a peek into our big day. There's a load of Q&A questions on there. There is, when it will be updated, there'll be the date of the wedding, the, the location, there'll be a pin so you can pin your own um, onto Google and, and get to the venue. Like, it is so intuitive. It is so new that, yeah, people are like, oh, I haven't got an invitation, but she texts us or whatever. Are you wanting to spend hundreds of pounds on invites or could that go elsewhere? Are they just going to go in the bin? Like, really think about it. What is important and weigh it up. Another one, one of my brides did not have a brand new wedding dress. Now, her family were horrified. They'll be like, it's bad luck. You can't do that. You have to have a brand new one. Do I though? And she pushed and she pushed and she upset her mom. She upset her gran. And she was like, I found my dream dress. I found it. It was on market, Facebook marketplace, but I found it. And it is like, what is it? It was meant to be like two, 2,500 pounds. And I think she got it for the bargain price of 500 quid. All right. It was a designer ground ground. It was a designer gown and she got it for 500 pounds. And her fiance, who was quite thrifty, was like, that is incredible. Like, you want that? That's what you want? Fantastic. Or was it on Vinted? It was something like that. Anyway, fantastic. You've done that. You saved all that money. Great. And then the rest went on something else. But her family were like, no, you can't do that. And she was like, why can't I? Why can't I? If you want to pay £2,500 for that dress, great. I want to wear it for a day, mum. Like, and then it was like, well, what's the story behind that dress? What happened? Like, it's a piece of clothing. It's a piece of clothing that I'm going to wear, that I'm going to look fantastic in, that I'm going to marry my fiancé in for my big day. I'm going to look incredible. It doesn't matter. Do things that work for you. So when you're looking at traditions, I want you to think about your wedding and when it comes across to doing things your way and being assertive. You don't. You can be assertive without being aggressive, by the way. So you can be assertive and say, "I, we want this. We're having this. And really think about the fact that just because things have always been that way, doesn't mean it always has to be that way like change direction let's start doing things a bit more for us instead of for other people as I've said before weddings bring out the best and the worst in people and you're going to have people question why you're doing things you're going to have people have expect expectations of you that well, the really un unrealistic expectations of you. And you're going to want to please everybody, especially when it comes to your immediate friends and family, like people who are really, really close to you. And I want you to really think about when it's all said and done, when you are married and you look back 
at the wedding planning and your wedding day, you'll be like, I really wish I'd have just stuck to my guns on that and not invited X, Y, Z people. I wish I'd stuck to my guns and said how I really felt in that moment. Now, when I said the world doesn't revolve around you, it's true. Some brides, I mean, bridezillas think that everyone should drop everything for them. Let's be realistic here. Life gets busy, you know, you'll have people having shift work, you'll have people who've got children, you'll have people who just can't do all the crazy things that you want them to do. So bring it all back, right? Start with the people that you know you've got control over. And the and with that I mean yourself and your other half. Like you two as a team can make anything happen. So naturally you don't need a million and one people to do things. Think of it this way. The more people who are involved in this, the more it's going to get messy because you've got to, yeah, I know about delegating, but you will have to go to and from and make sure people are doing things and they're turning up for things and it just gets messy. So really think about if that's something that you want and how you can do things your way, everything your way. It's all about being true to you, being true to what you want and your vision. Setting boundaries early will stop any, um, well, not all of, but you'll have probably some conflicts, some triggers, but it will help you manage. And if you're strong from the start, it will just continue. Just make sure at the end of the day that everything sits well with you, sits well with your values, sits well with what you want to create. If people are putting in, you know, their opinions and you're not agreeing and it's causing conflicts, just say how you feel. And yes, you'll have people go, well, this is my big day. This is, you know, are you paying for this? And people being you know, there's going to be to and fro Now, I'm quite fortunate in the fact that my friends and family will have never been this way. And my sister was the same, like with her wedding, she never had that stress, but I know a lot of brides and grooms do. So setting these things out early will help you tremendously. So again, ask yourself those two big questions that I asked just uh, yesterday, that I asked last week. Those two big questions are, what information are you willing to tell people about your wedding and your wedding planning process? You don't have to tell them anything. And two, who do you want involved in the wedding planning process, if anyone? And if you do, you don't need to tell them all the ins and outs. And then really think about what traditions that you do and do not want. Maybe look into the history of traditions and see if they fit well with you and your values. And if not, scrap them and create your own and really look at are your are you wanting these things that we've been conditioned to say that we want so do you want a bridal party a groom's party like do you want hen do do you want a stag do do you want the traditional cake do you want a traditional walk down the aisle really really think about that now people are like why are you making this seem really really complicated I am not in actual fact I am trying to get to the heart of what a wedding should be and it's none of this historical yuckiness archaic way of being it's about you two and creating the day that you want and that's not like everybody else is so in next week's episode it's the fourth and final one in this little mini series and it's all about wellness and mindset which is huge it's obviously part of my mission in helping all my brides and grooms so i would love you to stick around for that one because it will help you implement these things and manage your stress too so for now i'm going to love you and leave you and i hope you have a happy week wedding planning Thank you.